Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, October 18th, 2017 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Singapore. Yesterday, of course, was all about the new WPA2 crack attack, but looking at some of these more sophisticated and technically complex attacks, it's easy to forget that most people probably still get infected using fairly simple techniques. And Pratt is writing about how the DDE, the Dynamic Data Exchange Technique, is being used in recent mail spam in order to infect users. I've talked about a DDE before, it's nothing new at all, and actually kind of odd that people fall for it at all because they do have to click through multiple warnings in order to execute the malicious code. Now, Brad did include a number of screenshots from these warning dialogues. The only thing I can think of is that some of them are a little bit cryptic and that may be why users click OK and execute the malicious code. If you were hit by this latest wave, you may have seen the DocuSign themed emails that were used. And if a user clicked and executed the malicious code, they're likely infected now with a banking malware. Well, that's just a quick update on the WPA2 crack attack. Well, uh, vendors have been pushing out updates for it and uh, Microsoft and Apple already had updates included in their most recent operating system updates. So for those systems, you should be fine if you're up to date. Cisco, Ubiquiti, and a lot of other vendors have also published patches. So like I said yesterday, make sure that you check for your access points for your clients, that you're updating them. Probably this weekend is a great day to do that for your home devices. And RSA keys created by chips made by Infineon apparently are not as secure as originally believed. Infineon's chips are often used in smart cards. They're also used in some TPM modules and YubiKey used them in some of their products. The problem here is that if you are creating the keys on the device itself, they may be much easier to factor than they should be. So an attacker knowing the public key would be able to then derive the private key. Now, the vulnerability was originally discovered in January. Infineon was notified and has coordinated updates with affected products. YubiKey, for example, hasn't shipped vulnerable products for a few months now. If you have an affected product, check with your manufacturers for some of their firmware updates available. For others, you actually need to replace the affected smart card. In all cases, if you are vulnerable, you need to create new keys after updating your smart card. Now, this only affected RSA keys that were created on the device. If you did create the keys, let's say on a laptop, and then copy them over to the card, then you're probably not vulnerable. Also, elliptic curve keys, of course, are not vulnerable. The good part here is in some ways that it's possible to detect if the key is weak by analyzing the public key and the website describes the vulnerability does have a link to a test site where you can upload your public key to figure out if it's vulnerable or not. But please remember, they only need your public key. And Google Chrome released a new version with some security improvements. First of all, Chrome will now warn you if extensions are changing system settings. We've seen this in the past where, for example, extensions are changing proxy settings and the like. And then also Chrome now includes a more powerful malware detection engine by anti-malware maker ESET. The goal here is to supplement Google's safe browsing initiative which does warn users if they're visiting dangerous websites. This 
antivirus engine that's essentially now built into the browser will additionally warn the user about any malicious downloads. The ESET anti-malware scanning engine will only be included in the Windows version of Google Chrome. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.